many estimates, many of which are not accepted, so that you can distinguish the ones that have not been accepted and the ones that have been accepted, right? So that's an added, basically, step. Now, you could just open up the sales order and then type in the new customer, but most likely you might be going into the customer center over here, and I'd open up the estimate, double-clicking on it, and then you've got your sales order up top. So I can create a sales order directly from the estimate, which is probably the best way to go or a good way to go because then the sales order will be the exact same as the estimate. So I'm going to create a sales order. The estimate uh, has been copied to a sales order. If you, if you wish, you can edit the sales order as you would any other QuickBooks sales order. You can add line items, modify any of the quantities or amounts. So if from the estimate, the guy's like, well, I want like da 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 on it or something then you could still use the estimate i mean you might adjust the estimate and then pull it over but you could or make another estimate right but you could then pull it over and then adjust it over here when you have the more formalized document uh, uh over here it's saying you don't have sufficient quantity available to sell we don't have any of these items on that's okay because we're also going to use it to purchase with the purchase order we have not yet done that so we're gonna have to track the inventory. So I'm also gonna use this to make a purchase order uh, request. Uh, but before I did that, if I was gonna, and then it says, want to avoid negative quantities. Okay, I'm gonna say, okay. Before I did that, I might wanna finalize the sales order to make sure it's finalized and use that then to make the purchase order, which we'll do, uh, which we'll do next here. So now we have the sales order. It's once again for the normal process, that's our customer. I'm gonna make the date as of 010127. So I'm saying it's happened. Let's make it 010227. So they accepted it the next day. Tab, 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 tab. And then uh, if there was a purchase order uh, number from it, meaning if I was selling to a company and not an end user, they might have a request that came to me with a purchase order, right? Because they're requesting inventory from me. So if that was the case, I put the purchase order number in here and that can help me to kind of tie out my forms. The item pulled in like normal, the rate is pulling in. So once again, everything looks normal here. Uh, you could see uh, the active estimate on the right. I'm gonna close this out. Still though, nothing is being recorded yet at this point in time. We're still just kind of saying this has been finalized. We're gonna act on it now by actually doing what we need to do to get the job done. In this case, we're imagining going to the vendor and ordering this custom surfboard. Now, I'm not gonna print it in this case. In, in practice, you would probably email it, right, to the, to the client. I can save it. I'm gonna go up top and save the sales order. So now it's been recorded, but again, nothing has happened with it. So if I, if I close this, for example, and take a look at it. We're going to say now in normal process, customer number one, we've got the uh, we've got the transactions, and we're looking at uh, all the trans all date ranges, and we've got the sales order. You can run another report from it. You could look at it this way: lists drop down, chart of accounts. Going to the bottom of the chart of accounts, we see the sales orders. Another non-posting transaction. In other words, that didn't record anything to the financial statements. But if I double click on that, you get a report this way. Closing that out, if you go to the reports up top and uh, we go down to the sales. So here we have the open sales order by customer, which could be a useful report to be running, right? So now these are the ones that have been processed uh, to the sales order side of things and there's our sales order. But oftentimes we might be using this report then to go back to our customer center here and say, once I have the sales order, let's go to my homepage. The next process, this would be where I might collect the prepayment if I was gonna do that, either by selecting receive payment here and then making a negative receivable or turning on the prepayments and collecting the deposit. But I'm gonna imagine we don't get a prepayment this time so that we can see the normal process without the prepayment. So the next thing that's gonna to happen to us is we're gonna order the surfboard, the psychedelic surfboard. We're gonna get it. And so we're gonna make a purchase order so that we can then order it from our vendor and then receive it. And once that happens, then we'll turn back around and create uh, the invoice. 
So let's do that. If I, I the way we probably would do that is to go into here and say, now we have a sales order. I'm, the next process would be from the sales order, I'm going to make a purchase order. So I'm going to make a purchase order now. And it's going to say specify uh, what to include in the purchase order. I'm going to create the purchase order for all allowed items, meaning everything down here. If there were multiple items, I'm putting them all on there. You could create a purchase order for selected items if you had multiple items and you wanted to distinguish them. But I'm just going to say all items making the purchase order. And now this is going to go to my vendor. So once again, I'm going to call the vendor normal process, one normal process vendor, because I want to have all of them tied out to this scenario so we can compare it with the next scenario, right? So I'm going to say tab, I'm going to quick add the vendor, and then I'm going to put this in as well as 010, let's say 327, tab, 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 tab. I'm going to close this on the right. Item is pulling in properly, and it's $100. Notice here, we only have the cost. We don't have our markup here because we're purchasing it. So it's not $175 and we don't have the sales tax because we're imagining the sales, the tax is only being applied in this case when we sell the item, not when we purchase the item. So this is just the cost to us. But once again, it's just a request, internal document. We're requesting and we're imagining that we have the ability to request something without paying for it yet at that point in time, uh, if that were the situation. That's what a sales order does. Now we're requesting from our vendor to send us the psychedelic surfboard with a bill in it possibly, and then we will pay it, right? So I'm gonna say save and close. And once again, nothing has been recorded. <laughs> These are all non-recording trips. So I'm gonna close this back out. And if I go to my vendor center now, drop down vendor, vendor center, I can see here, if I change the dates again to see all of the dates, all dates, there's my purchase order. So now I have uh, my purchase order. You can also see that if I went to the lists drop down, chart of accounts, bottom of the lists, there's our purchase order, another non-posting transaction. So if I go into it, uh, the purchase order, there's a report this way. You can also see reports in the reports drop down and go down to the purchases and we're looking at the open purchase orders, for example, or open purchase order detail if you wanted, or open purchase order by job, depending on the circumstances. Let's look at the detail. So there it is, there is our purchase order. But once again, nothing being reported or recorded to the profit and loss or to the balance sheet. You can't see it as clearly on the balance sheet because it already had data in it, but nothing has been recorded to either of these. Now, that's the starting point. We're going to continue on with this and collect the inventory and enter a bill, and then we'll continue on with it next time. However, I'm going to open up QuickBook, I mean, uh, uh, Excel, and I want to take a look at this from an Excel standpoint as well. I'm going to bring this down to like 125, and then so I can see it a little bit better, and then... I'm just going to set up an Excel worksheet so we can see the debits and credits in Excel because that's going to be more transparent so we can see each step. So I'm going to say this one, the starting one is going to be the normal process. Process. That's going to be my tab. I'm going to do this fairly fast because, because it's not an Excel course. But uh, you, so you don't have to actually do it, but I think it's useful to kind of do it if you want to. I'm going to right click on this. We're going to format the cells. I'm going to make this uh, currency negative numbers bracketed. I'm going to get rid of the decimals and no dollar sign. Okay, that's my 